In this video, I'd like to focus in on the end cloth capabilities in Maya 2023. Now, in a previous video, I went over the basics of particles and for in particles. And for the reason for this is mainly because end cloth borrows a lot of its concepts from the end particle systems. However, end cloth throws in an additional element. So I'm on my FX here. And one thing that end cloth adds in is it adds in what is called the passive collider. The passive collider is the way that we have the cloth actually be stopped. You will still have gravity, you will still have a pull on the fabric, but as you're going to see in the little example here, you're not going to have a lot as far as um, controls go. So normally we're going to start off with the age old, you have a plane, and let's go ahead and enlarge this. And keeping it selected here, I'm going to pull it up a little bit so that it falls. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to end cloth and choose create end cloth. So you should see your familiarity here, the age old nucleus, as far as your gravitational pull and if any wind is in uh, the scene and stuff like that. However, you also now have an end cloth element as well that we'll talk about here in a little bit as far as types of collisions, things like that, but also too, you have a lot of presets as far as what type of cloth you want this to look like. Now I'm going to add one more item into your scene here. Um, I normally like whenever I'm demonstrating, choose something that actually kind of has an edge to it. So something like the sphere or even the polygon cone, uh, just so that we can actually see the bend of the cloth. Now, if I go ahead here and I'll actually change this, I will call this cloth demo. If I go ahead and hit my play, you see that the cloth falls. However, as you're seeing, it went straight through your cone. This is coming back up under end cloth. That's coming back to your passive collider. So by default, you need to actually add in a passive collider and assign it to an object. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to grab the cone here and why don't I call this collider demo. And keeping that cone highlighted, I'm going to come back to the end cloth and choose to make it a passive collider. Now, whenever you make a collider, you're going to see that an end rigid element is added into the scene. It is associated with the collider object. And you can also see over on the side here, it does have its own set of tools and shapes here. But now if I go ahead and play the scene, you see the difference there. It now actually stops the cloth or the end cloth, which is your plane, from actually falling through the scene. So what's nice about this is you can come in and you can actually change. First off, you can assign materials to it. So I could actually come in here. You know, you could change your coloring. But a couple of things that I'd really like to talk about here is on the end cloth shape itself under the presets. This is something I like to show students to get them started because yes, as you can see, you have a lot of different collision options, a lot of different pressure options as far as going through and really fine tuning that collision as far as, for instance, I could add in and make it super bouncy here. So let's go ahead and try that there. And you can see how it's almost kind of just wobbling like kind of like jello there at the end. It can take a little bit of getting used to, but what I find helps students get started with end cloths is under the end cloth shape, coming into these presets and taking a look at some of the already set pre-created elements here. Like one of the ones I know a lot of my students like is chain mail. So I'm going to go ahead and say replace. And now if I go ahead and hit the play button, you see how I kind of get that chain mail reaction there. You don't like that. That's okay. You can come back under the presets and maybe let's try honey. 
So there you can see you kind of got that big dip going on as far as the drippiness of honey. So I like to start folks out as far as just getting a feel and seeing what you can do with the end cloth. Now there's one other thing that I would like to add on as far as talking a little bit about, and I'll go ahead and change this back to chain mail here, but talking a little bit about and revisiting the, part the end particle systems. I'm gonna go ahead and add a new plane off to the side here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to end cloth and make this into a passive collider. And I'm gonna call this ground collider. The rigid bodies can also be applied and work with emitters for particle systems. So I can actually have a particle system and you can see there with that rigid body, you see how all of my particles are also being stopped there. This is great for water effects. This is great for snow, anything along those lines. So as you can see over in the outliner, you're getting a lot more information going on, but a couple of things I'd like to point out before closing up this video here. You can have as many end cloths as you like. For each collider, you can have multiple colliders. The colliders with the end rigids are going to also affect your particles. But at the end of the day, again, like I said in a previous video, you only have the single nucleus that controls your gravity and wind in the scene. So that's an introduction and follow up as far as working with end cloth rigid elements, and also how those tie back into the end particle systems in Maya.